a very important concept for today's video which is going to be about the concept of futures in dart probably a you would have uh, heard me talk about this very very long and also very very importantly in my other flutter video so with respect to futures in dart is a re really good concept right that is going to be the concept of asynchronous programming which means that you don't have to always run your program linearly you could think about this as like say for example there is something you're doing and there is another multitasking work that you're also doing say for example you're eating and you're watching tv you're eating and you're also doing something with your mobile so all of these are multitask work right similarly there's also a simple concept called as futures and asynchronous programming structures with respect to uh, dart in particular so i'm going to be taking you through those important slides here and once that is done i'm also going to give you a simple problem to solve and we're going to create that create a simple uh, logic around that and hopefully you understand this concept much better it's a very very important concept and also this is going to be towards the last section of the second phase with respect to the dart programming tutorial series so make sure you always take your notes and let's get this video started all right so futures in dart are very simple they represent asynchronous programming structures like i told you so what does asynchronous asynchronous mean it means that instead of wasting your time or doing something that is going to cost you so much time in a say a synchronous manner that is sequential manner let's say a plus b is equal to 10 and you're going to check a's value b's value and then finally compute the value of 10 what if you have hundreds uh, hundreds of ca calculations to do so instead of just doing it one by one you could take think about it as doing multitasking like uh, how i told you in the first start of this video so when you do that that's going to be really simple and also it's going to save you so much time that's what futures in data are going to do they're going to make sure that your time consuming operations are not going to hinder your sequential work the main use of futures in Dart, uh, for example, let's take this simple example I have given here. That is going to be network operation. User is going to request the URL. It, it's definitely going to take some time to load, right? Now, there's nothing like it's going to load in less than a millisecond. Nothing has ever happened like that. It's always going to take some time. And when that is going to be a slow network, let's assume that it's going to take more than 30 seconds to load something. So you don't want the user to just const constantly wait for that thing to load. Instead, you could just take these all these IO operations, nothing but uh, all these network operations operations time consuming operations and throw it into something that is going to wait for you but do it in the background so instead of just making a request and waiting for the response you just make something make a request asynchronously and wait for a response but instead to the user you would show something like say for example the data is loading please wait all of the messages are going to be happening in the main thread and that's the main use of futures they're going to you got to split the time consuming work away from the main thread and that way we are saving so much time and also the user engagement is going to go up straight up so how do you handle futures in, in specifically particular with respect to your dart we're going to use the two important keywords these keywords are async and await so the main use of async here is that this, this is definitely going to mean that whatever function you are marking as asynchronous is going to be mean that that is going to some something is going to happen asynchronously in that there is something happening in the future something that's, that is nothing it's, it's not going to happen in the main thread so when you mark something with the async keyword which i'm going to show you in, in a couple of minutes time it definitely means that there is going to be something happening asynchronously we got that part but what is the use of an await function so now you mark something as asynchronous so it's going to take some time to load it's going to take some time to come out as a response in the future so you definitely need to wait for it to come up with response right that's what the sequential work is going to be about so you got to wait for the response and that's what await coming comes into picture you always include your await inside your asynchronous function there is no point about waiting for something uh, in the future if the function is not going to be in an asynchronous function so that's the whole point of asynchronous functions you're going to be waiting for something in the future and the waiting is going to be done through the await keyword so we're going to take you through a simple example here so this is going to be a simple example what i've done is i've done a lot of cool stuff here just don't get worried about all of that right now so what i've done is it's a simple main block here so i'm going to come out with what of what are all these different things in, in some time but this is the main method as usual you have a main method and main method is going to enter re immediately here so it's going to print that the process starts but it's going to be taking some time to load the response so like like i told you there is no point of waiting for something unless you mark the function as asynchronous so how do you mark a function as asynchronous then show that whatever the flower brackets are you going to put that is this async keyword before that as soon as you put your async keyword before your flower bracket it definitely means that 
there is going to be some future operation happening in that now what exactly have we done we have marked the entire thing that is marked the main method itself as an asynchronous method all right one thing is done but what are we waiting for we are waiting for some response which is nothing but some future response and how do you simulate that future response we are going to be simulating the future response using the method called as future dot delayed this is just a way to mark something that is going to happen in the future let us assume that i have written this method here i have written future dot delayed duration is going to take 5 seconds to load and i'm going to reply with something in the future which is a string here so what do you do as a return type here make sure you mark it as future of string so whatever values that is going to come in the future is going to take this class called as future you could even return integer here so if you're going to return an integer you got to mark this as an integer so you use a two here similarly there is going to be you could do anything you could do list of string here you could do list of integers anything you are going to return in the future is going to come out as a future of class so you got to mark that in the return type make sure that there's some future response is present and once this is present you you are sure that this is going to return something in the future you going to make sure you wait for that but again what do you wait for you always wait for in your asynchronous class asynchronous method only if you wait for something in the asynchronous we only wait for something in the future that is going to be loaded here if you directly put this here it's there is no point in this because it's always going to return a future of instance only you have to wait for the response if you don't wait for the response it's going to return with something that is not going to mean anything always wait for your response from a future method the future method is this one waiting for the response you are now returning this response and you just saying that this is going to be entire thing is going to be asynchronous now there's two things you are going to do here you are waiting for only an asynchronous you are waiting for something in the future but that is going to be asynchronously done so that's what exactly you have done here through these two methods and when i run this the run this example now it's going to immediately print that the process is starting so we wait 2 3 4 5 and and once that is done it's going to print the value the method said the response from the future which is something from here now let us take this await out like let us assume that i'm not waiting for the future response what does it say it's it will immediately go in it will say that the process starts but it's saying some future of string it is not even waiting it is just immediately coming out saying that is going to be some future of string but i don't know what it is unless you wait for that you would never know so that's why you using a wait for await method here and once that once that is loaded you just going to load that in the response and send it back now there's two com- continuous callbacks happening first is the wait for response here which is in turn is going to wait for this and then return this answer and once that is returned which is again they are waiting so long here and you're going to wait for the response and print it there and that's what is going to happen so one main thing is that when you have an asynchronous function everything before an await as soon as you hit an await unless you hit an await everything that is going to be printed is going to happen one below the other normally like it's going to be sequential if i do one i do two it's going always going to happen one below the other it doesn't matter as soon as you hit an await method as soon as you hit the keyword await it see as you see it's just happening just one below the other sequentially as soon as you hit the await method after that it is going to wait for the answer that's the whole point of futures in dart and hopefully i hope you guys understood this cleanly because this is a very important concept again i just be posting all these notes and the links in the description i put link in the description make sure to check all of that out the code is there you can also find all of the materials there so that it's going to be helpful for you guys when you're actually going through all the concepts one by one how awesome. hopefully i took you guys through the proper flow here you hopefully understood the concept of futures in dart very important we are also going to be taking about looking at the streams in dart in the next video which is also an important concept so make sure you stay tuned for that this is a very important concept that can make you take your notes check the link in the description there's going to be footer notes obviously available for the entire series uh, let me meet you in the next video on plans bharat peace out have a super awesome day